After knocking on the door of the Western Conference and getting no answer for years, in 1913 Notre Dame was forced to travel far and wide to find worthy opponents to play. Midway through the 1913 season, Coach Jesse Harper's team embarked on the longest trip in school history. They boarded a train and headed east to West Point, New York to face the powerful Army squad. Coach Harper, with a band of 19 Golden Blue Warriors, left Thursday noon for West Point, where for the first time in the history of Notre Dame football, the varsity will meet the Army 11. It's interesting to just consider what that meant back then. Travel by train, extremely long trips. They traveled by day coach as far as Buffalo, and they switched to a sleeper in Buffalo, and the regular players got the lower berths, the substitutes got the upper. With no hotels in the area large enough to entertain the Notre Dame team, the traveling party of 19 players were housed at Column Hall on the West Point campus. It was a, uh, a smaller squad, about five or six fans, supporters, like the proprietors of Hully and Mike's, the famous downtown cigar store, Billiards Emporium, uh, huge supporters of the program even then. They get out there and they look at some of the newspapers when one of them talks about the visiting team from South Bend, Illinois. So uh, not tremendously well known by everybody yet. They're treated tremendously at West Point, and brought into the dining hall to great acclaim, just, just treated like valued guests. The road trip to West Point cost the university a grand total of $845.50. That was offset by the contract guarantee of $1,000 paid to Notre Dame by the U.S. Military Academy. The net gain of $154.50 made the trip a profitable one for Notre Dame. However, it was the outcome of the game itself that would change the school's fortunes. <laughs>